Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Betty Miller and her sirens broadcasting from the romantic rainbow room of the Swank Waldorf Astoria in New York. I suppose you think it's impossible. We're only a sleeper jump from the big town right now. We got this far, didn't we? Yeah, but where are we? In the romantic sample room, the Swank Commercial House in Brewsterville, PA. Tune in next week, folks, and listen to us slowly starving to death. Not me. I don't like being stranded for weeks in a one-cylinder town like this. I'm through blowing my brains out, rehearsing. For what? For the benefit at the orphan asylum today, don't you remember? Why doesn't somebody give us a benefit? We sure could use one. All right, so we're not getting paid for this orphanage job. But maybe it'll bring us a dance date or two. Believe me, kids, this is no time to quit. Relax, honey child. Nobody's quitting. Arlene said she was through. Skip it. You think I want the reputation of being a troublemaker that breaks up bands? Not me. So let's go and give the little rat a treat. And a girl, Arlene! <laughs> Say, what are you Crosby kids doing here? Oh, you know Dad and his horses. On behalf of the children and our board of directors, it's a real pleasure to welcome you to our annual birthday party with two kinds of ice cream. As you all know, each year we are favored with an address by our great benefactor, a man who was formerly one of our own orphans and who rose to become the head of America's largest chain of theaters, Mr. Henry F. Brewster. However, this year, Mr. Brewster is unable to be with us and instead has sent his charming secretary from New York to deliver his personal message. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Dorothy Dodd. Thank you. Before Mr. Brewster left for Washington last night, he asked me to express his disappointment and to deliver his contribution. Mrs. Robbins, as the matron of this wonderful institution, will you accept this, uh, will you accept this annual donation for the Brewsterville Orphanage? The heartfelt thanks of all of us go to Mr. Brewster and Miss Dodd. Thank you. I have more good news. A little later on, Herbie Fenton, another of our own boys now making his mark in the business world, will be here to sing for us. <laughs> we will open our program now with Miss Betty Miller and her young ladies. A guy named Chopin locked his door and sat down at his piano to write a tune. He only had an hour or two because his rent was overdue and the landlord said you'll have to get out by noon. He wanted to write a great big symphony. He wanted to write a 12 page rhapsody. He had the inclination, had the inspiration, but he didn't have the time. He had to forget the great big symphony. He had to forget the 12-page rhapsody. And so on that October It must run one minute and right on the nose. Ready? Set? Go!
played it then. But when the ghost of Chopin plays it again today, he digs it solid with a beat. He's tender on a fender, you can hear him a mile away. Chopin is cooking below me. this world. Can you play it? Certainly. It's one of our best arrangements. What kind of voice have you? Oh, just fair. High or low? Oh, well, uh, a sort of medium. Medium. How's this? Your... <laughs> That's it's a little too high. I usually play for myself on the black notes. Is this black enough for you? Oh, that's fine. Okay, kids, out of this world and keep it medium. You're clear out of this world when I'm looking at you. I hear out of this world the music that no mortal ever knew. Your right out of a book, the fairy tale I read when I was so high. Say, I've heard that voice before. Me too. Me too. Me too. Was more enchanted by Lorelei than I. After waiting so long for the right time. After reaching so long for a star, all at once from the long and lonely night time, and despite time, here you are. Still like the guy with the bow tie. You better not let Mom hear you say that. I'd cry. Of this world, if you said we were through, so let me fly out of this world and spend the next eternity or two. Somebody get 
some water, quick. Are you all right? What's happened? I don't know. One minute you were singing, and the next, uh, I was out of this world. Hold it. What do you think of that? I'll take 12 of them. Gosh, Life Magazine. Did you really take that picture, Charlie? I sure did with my candid camera. It's the picture of the week. Hey, take a look at the check they sent me. A hundred bucks. A hundred bucks? Hiya, Charlie. Hey, Herbie, come here. What's all the excitement about? Take a look. I made you famous. Oh, good gosh, that's me. What's it say? Hi, any messages? Uh, telegram for Miss Miller. Telegram? What now? Don't tell me anything more can happen to us. Probably someone wants us to play another benefit. Oh, Miss Miller. Do you remember me? Herbie Fenton. The show at the orphanage last oh, week. Oh, yeah. Well, there's an article in here I thought you might be interested in. It's... Hey, some other time. I'm expecting a nervous breakdown. Oh. Well, if I don't see you again, good luck. We can use plenty of that, brother. Hallelujah, a job. The Crawford Cosmetic Company. Oh, what? Can you be in New York City tomorrow night for tryout guest appearance? On our coast-to-coast -coast program with option for one year. Can we? Are they kidding? Uh-oh. Hold everything. Listen to this. No deal without your male crooner. Male crooner? <laughs> Just our luck. He's got us mixed up with some other band. Oh, no, he hasn't. Look, the crooner is Herbie. Herbie? Now, don't you swoon. Get going. And bring him back alive. Herbie. Listen, Herbie. Yes, Miss Miller? Oh, don't be so formal. Just call me Betty. Say, what happened? That picture of you, it gave me a marvelous idea. I'm going to give you the chance of a lifetime. How would you like to be the singer with my band? Me? I think you're something the band needs. So you know what? I'm going to give you a contract. A contract? We're going to New York tonight, and you're coming with us. New York tonight? <laughs> Isn't it swell? Oh, I couldn't do that. You couldn't? Oh, no. But I tell you, I just couldn't do it. For working all day and half the night, how much do you make? Eighteen dollars a week. I'll give you twenty-five just for singing. Twenty-five? All right, make it fifty. Oh, now I know you're kidding. Fifty a week isn't too much for a singer like you. Oh. Why, do you know what they pay Crosby and Frank Sinatra? Oh, well, those fellows are worth fifty dollars a week. Gee, Herbie, I wish you'd go to New York with us. You'd be a knockout with the girls there. They'd love you. Me? That voice of yours, it does something to women. It makes them all warm and fluttery inside. Really? You and I could have a lot of fun in New York. Going to shows, walking in the park on moonlight night, dancing together. Would you really do that? Of course. You know, you're an awful cute boy, Herbie. Nobody ever told me that before. I don't know why. With those eyes. Hey, what's going on here? Where are you going? New York. Here it is, kids. All drawn up by a lawyer. The party in the first part, whereas is the party of the second part, ipso facto. In plain English, kids, Herbie's mine. All mine. Oh, 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 oh. I already wired Crawford would be there for the broadcast tomorrow night. Uh, question, please. How are we going to get there? Hitchhike. Hitchhike? That's great. And who's going to pick me up with my big bass drum? Or without it? Oh, don't go away, dear. I'll think of something nasty. Look, why don't you wire Crawford to send us our railroad fare and take it out of our salaries later? All we need is about $300. Sure, he's got nothing to lose. But we have. He'd pay us off in buttons if he knew we were broke. It's bad psychology. We can't get to New York on psychology. Am I intruding? No, come in, shorty. Now that you're here. May I talk to you, Miss Miller? What about? Herbie Fenton, such a sweet boy. A little too simple for his own good, as you know. What do you know, dearie? That you have him under contract for $50 a week. 
And he's very happy. Oh, don't get me wrong, Miss Miller. I would have done the same thing if I had the chance. But personally, I think he's worth more than 50. So maybe we can talk business. Well, pull up a bed and sit down. Thanks. I'll give you 300 cash for a piece of Herbie's contract. Well, that's a railroad fare to New York. Pretty large keyholes they have in these country hotels. How would you work this little hunk of lend lease? Herbie's contract calls for $50 a week, not a nickel more. If Betty can get more than that for his services, she keeps the difference. I want to buy a share of Betty's profits, just like you buy shares in a gold mine. Look, I'll show you how it's done. I scribbled this out on the way up here. Receive from Dorothy Dodge blank dollars for 25% interest in my contract with Herbie Fenton. Now, all we have to do is fill in $300 here, and then you sign here. I get a faint odor of something unkosher. Are you sure this is legal? Call up any lawyer in town. He'll tell you it's done every day in the week. Go on. Oh, come on. Come, come on, on Daddy. Daddy. Go on. I hope I know what I'm doing. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Well, I won't keep you any longer. You have things to do, and so have I. Good luck, ladies. Hello? Miss Miller, uh, there's a report that you are going to New York tonight. Uh, uh, congratulations. I, um, I have your statement here. Uh, $318. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry, Miss Miller. I'll have to have the money before you leave. The man says 318, period. And the music wouldn't sound so hot without our instruments. Or would it? What are you worrying about? Write out some more of those contract receipts or whatever they are. You sign them, leave blank spaces for the figures, and we'll peddle them around town to Herbie's friends. I'm the one that has to sign these things. What happens to the people we sell them to if Herbie flops tomorrow? Oh, so they bought a ticket on the wrong horse. Sure. That's right. Okay. Here we go. Robins. How much? A hundred dollars. So if you'll come to the Pringle sisters' home now. Spring Street, 123. 123 Spring Street. They'll give you the cash. Don't mention it. Good luck. That does it. Another hundred dollars worth. Somebody pack for me, will you? I'll pay the hotel bill, buy our tickets, and pick up Herbie. I'll meet you at the station. Betty, Betty, I just found out something you should know. Save it for later. I'm too busy now. All the little kitties tucked in for the night? Yes. Now, have you got time for late news bulletin? About what happened while I was out sewing chairs? You didn't sell any, did you? No, you see, I Everything happened so fast. I don't know which sold what to who. Now, let's see. The Pringle sisters bought 25%. We unloaded 25 on Gus Palookas. With the 25 Dorothy Dodge took, that makes 75%. I hope there weren't any more shares sold. Maybe I'd better find out just how much of Herbie we have left. Yeah. Hey, kids. What is it? What's the matter? How much of Herbie did you sell to that soda jerk? 25%. Why? Nothing. I'm just naturally inquisitive. Hey, kids. How much? Shh. Oh, I... me. the wife. Arlene. How many shares of Herbie did you sell to Irving Crunk? 25%. Oh, no! Good grief! What happened? Herbie, we sold 125% of him. 125%? How could we do that? Five different people each brought one quarter interest in him. Is that bad? Bad? I know a promoter who got five years for doing the same thing. You mean it's grand arsony? Oh, it's worse than that. It's taking money under false pretenses. There's no way on earth of dividing Herbie's earnings into 125%. Well, now, don't get excited. All you have to do is return the money to one of them. <laughs> sure, that would do it. Except we spent all the money to get to New York. And if Herbie clicks tomorrow, not one of those stockholders will sell his share. 
fair. Wait a minute. Suppose Herbie lays an egg at the broadcast tomorrow night. What? Then the sponsor won't want him. He'll go back to the Western Union, and there'll be no earnings to cut out. Wishful thinking, chump. When Herbie croons, the goons all swoon. That's where you're wrong. I've been trying to tell you this for hours. Herbie's singing had nothing to do with Dorothy's faint. Gosh, she was dieting. Dieting? Fanny, are you sure? Positive. She told me herself. It was all pineapple juice, not schmaltz. In other words, it was just from hunger. Like Herbie singing. Let's put this just between ourselves, chum. All of it. Yeah. Well, that broadcast tomorrow is the break we've been praying and starving for. And if Herbie flops, we can't miss with our own numbers. Oh, we'll slay him. Tickets, please. Two girls in each of the lowers and a man in upper six. Six? No one there. Well, I know he's aboard. I practically carried him. Maybe I better find him before he falls off. <laughs> He's never been on a train before. Nine. Ten. So here you are. Eleven. What are you doing? Counting. Twelve. Counting what? Telegraph poles. There are 16 to a mile. I'm just trying to figure out how fast we're going. Oh, how fast are we going? Oh, you made me lose count. I hate myself. Oh, that's all right. There are plenty more poles. Look, Herbie, it's late. Don't you think you'd better go to bed and get some sleep? You know, we rehearse awfully early in the morning, as soon as we get in. Oh, I couldn't sleep right now. I'm too excited about tomorrow. Tell me honestly, do you think they'll like me in New York? Well, New York is it's funny. Some people click like that. Others just don't. But you have nothing to worry about. No? No, you've got a good, steady job to go back to where all your friends are. So if anything should go wrong, I mean, why, it isn't the end of the world for you, is it? No. Believe me, you're sitting pretty compared to me. Show business. That's the only thing I know. It's my bread and butter. There's nobody to take care of me but me. That's what I can't understand. I mean, a girl like you who's got everything. How come you never got married? Well, I guess the right man has never asked me. Oh. Well, what kind of a man would the right man have to be? Oh, a fellow as good-looking as Ray Milan, as cute as Sonny Thompson, can dance like Fred Astaire. But I'd settle any day for a plain, ordinary guy, if he had $100,000. $100,000? Oh, you're kidding. That doesn't sound like you. Look, Herbie, you can't blame a girl for wanting security when she gets married. Look at my mother. She married a vaudeville actor for love and love alone. Well, that's the way she ended up. Alone. I don't want to bring up a family the way I was dragged up. My kids are going to have a, a decent home, plenty to eat, and an education. Is there anything wrong with that? I think it's swell. You know, that's the way I feel about kids, too. So let me fly out of this world. I'm sorry. Good night, folks. Herbie's not carrying his own audience anymore. I think everything is going to be all right. broadcast I'm interested in. Uh, would you mind putting that away, please? For rehearsal, huh? <laughs> yes, that's all it is. Sort of an audition for swooners. Yeah, we get three bucks a swoon. Well, swoon more quietly, will you? Thanks, officer. We'll try. 
Well, by the way, when you go home tonight, be sure and listen to the glamour hour. Look, our sponsor, Mr. Crawford, does he like comedy? Sure, when his ulcers are bothering him. There he is in the booth, the big fella. What's he doing, breaking in a new ulcer? Are you ready, Herbie? I, I, I can't get dressed by myself. What's the matter? Look at this tie. Oh, is that all? Let me help you. Thanks. Sit still. I can't. I'm a little scared. Everybody's scared opening night in New York. You too? Just paralyzed, that's all. Well, that makes me feel a little better anyway. There. It still doesn't look right. You're on in one minute, Miss Miller. Come on, Herbie, don't worry about it. They can't see it over the air. And now I want you to meet the Western Union boy with a message especially for you. A sweet boy with a sweet voice. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Herbie Fenton. Everything 
everything they said he was and more. Why, in all my years in radio, I've never seen or heard anything like this amazing... Congratulations, Miss Miller. I don't have to tell you what a success you are. Frankly, your troubles are over. A smile, please. Herbie, my boy, you've certainly vindicated my judgment. What a voice! What a personality! I know a good thing when I see it, and I'm willing to pay for it. Is your contract, Miss Miller? Five hundred a week for the band, and five hundred for Herbie. Five hundred dollars a week? Are you kidding? Well, here it is in black and white. And here's a pen. Now, wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't rush me. I can't sign this. You mean you won't? But listen, Betty, after all, if I'll handle this, it's my funeral. It's a lot of money. But if you ask me, you're a very lucky young lady. Oh, I could be a lot luckier, mister. You know, I'm a little hurt that you take this attitude. However, naturally, I want you to be happy. But you understand, this is my absolute limit. Seven fifty for the band and a thousand for the boy. A thousand? Oh. Suit yourself, young lady, but remember, I have an option on your services. Either you work for me or I'll sue you. You'll sue me. The line forms on the right. Thank you, Miss Miller. You'll never regret it. We'll have to discuss a publicity campaign, musical arrangements, things like that, but they can wait till tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Watch those pipes, Herbie. Don't catch cold. Yes, sir. You're wonderful. You really think so? Oh, gee, I never saw a thousand dollars all at one time in my life. I won't know what to do with it. <laughs> well, that's good, because you're not going to get it. Listen, Herbie, your contract is with me, remember? And you're going to get fifty dollars a week, just what the contract calls for, until I can straighten out four or five little business complications. I only get fifty dollars a week? Well, that's just for the time being, you understand. Later on, we'll have a brand new deal. Okay. Oh, sure, it's okay with me. Gosh, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be here now with you. In New York, I mean. Gee, I'd bet my last dollar on you. Thanks. I... Thanks. Thousand dollars. Fifty. Many thanks, girls. You were swell. How would you like to make it a steady job every time Herbie broadcasts? Thank you. Okay, it's a deal. Well, good night, kids. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Keep them sighing. Well, congratulations. So, you cooked up that blitz. You know what I ought to do to you? Yes, thank me from the bottom of your purse. A thousand dollars a week ain't hay. Why, Grandma, what big ears you have. Certainly. Well, I think I'll drop in and see Herbie and take a few bows. Listen, Herbie is 100% honest. If he knew you framed that ovation, it might do something to his morale. You don't want him quitting, do you? Heaven forbid. If his tonsils hold out, he should make at least $100,000 this year, and my share of that would... I know, I know. I can divide. And how? Well, don't worry, girls. I won't spoil anything. Good night, and give my love to Golden Boy. <laughs> Sweet kid, that Dorothy. Someday I'm gonna pull her blonde hair out by its black roots. Well, that's one stockholder that won't sell back her interest. None of them will when they hear about you getting a thousand a week for Herbie. Look, why don't you call them up long distance now and buy them out before they hear the news? Oh, fine, they find out and I go to jail. Listen, Chum, you'll certainly go to jail if you don't buy at least one of them out. Can't I sew myself into the darnest places? Don't you worry. I'll see that Herbie gets home safe. You know, we gotta break that heck of looking up at the tall buildings every time he crosses the street. <laughs> I'm very happy for to disagree with you. What do you think what I am, a Nietzsche character? We heard him tonight and he was terrific. Strictly on the beams. You know something? That boy sends me. And brings me back, too. Besides mommy here, she won't let me. No sale. No, oh, not interested. Oh, if it wasn't worth a lot more than I paid for it, you wouldn't be calling me up this hour than I had all the way from New York. Yes, Betty. I understand. You have to get one share back. Well, I'll talk to the Pringle sisters the first thing in the morning. They'll probably want a profit for selling. They always do.
comes around every year. June comes around every spring time. Just when your poor old heart can't go on, it seems. June brings a basket full of dreams. And before you know it, you See the moon wink his eye. <laughs> Hearts are waltzing in swing time. So wear a great big smile, cause after all she'll never fall for last year's time. And you comes around every year. taking singing lessons last week. Oh, that's fine. If I could make it, you can. That's what I figure. Say, Pop, how much are they paying you fellas here in this big town? Oh, here on Broadway with tips and overtime. I knock off about 60 bucks a week. 60 bucks? That's right. Well, so long. June comes around every year. June comes around. Sixty bucks. That's ten more than I get. Seventy-five hundred. Ten weeks. Holy smokes, that's seventy-five thousand. Come in. Ready, Mr. Fenton? Yeah, sure. Oh, boy, 7,500, all mine, separate deal for the band. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'll set? I'll set. Oh, boy. outside jobs? No. And now that you brought it up, I get office for you every day. Movies, phonograph records, baby contests, advertising testimonials. I don't take any of them. Well, why not? I'm a big star now. I'm the number one singer of the country. So you're beginning to believe your own publicity. Oh, no, it's not that. But, gee, I, I still only get $50 a week. Now, that sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? I told you there were several business complications. Yes, but that was weeks ago. Look, I don't care about the money you've collected up to now. If you need it, all right, take it. It's yours. But from now on, we've got to have a brand new deal. From now on, I've got to make some money, too. Have you added these up, all these offers? There's a fortune here. It didn't take long for that money bug to bite you, brother. Oh, well, it's... Not just the money. Then what is it? Well, I've got to have a certain amount before... Look, maybe I'm crazy. I probably don't stand a chance anyway. But with this personal appearance tour and all these offers, I'll have just what I want in only ten weeks. But, Herbie, you can't do it. There aren't enough hours in the day for all these Look, things. Look, Betty. 
Let's not argue. I want you to okay the tour and all the rest of these offers. So will you please start calling the people up right away, please? That's the way it has to be. That's the way it... I guess. I'm glad you see it, my... Never mind. I heard. Well, listen, chump, do you mind if I say something? I wish you would. Well, don't you think it's about time you took Herbie aside and gently explained the facts of life? Fanny, I just haven't got the nerve to tell him right now. Before this tour is over, I'll figure some way out. I've got to. <laughs> What are you doing with your money? You're certainly not spending any of it. Oh, Betty's putting it in the bank in New York for me. Have to make hay while the sun shines. You make just as much when it's raining, Midas. You're picking on the wrong party. I'm the one that signed up for this gruesome tour, and confidentially, I'm just as tired as the rest of you. So dry up, ladies, and let's get some sleep. I know I have a terrible nerve, Betty, darling. You've never given me any encouragement. Sometimes I think you don't even like me. No, that's no good. Uh, Angel, no, uh, uh, darling, listen, Betty, dear. Every time you look at me, I, I thrill to the very core. All right, I know it's corny. Well, hello. Hello. I was just talking about it. I was just thinking about you. Were you? That's a swell moon, isn't it? Are you cold? No. I think you'd better put your coat on. I have something to tell you, Betty, darling. I, uh, I hope you'll understand. Well, what I was thinking about was well, it was you and me and that night you talked about getting married. I talked about getting married? Don't you remember? You said the man you marry must have $100,000. Well, naturally, that was kind of discouraging to a fellow who'd always hoped to get married while he was still young enough. To marry a young girl, I mean. And then that telegram came about the tour. Boy, there it was. Practically all the money I needed to qualify. Herbie, you can't mean what you're saying. Oh, but I do. I've always been crazy about you, ever since I first saw you. And now I'm worth $100,000. Oh, no, Herbie. But this is the moment I've waited for, to tell you that it's all yours, honey, for always and always. But I was kind of hoping that you'd take me along with it. Will you? Oh, Herbie. <laughs> oh, Betty. Please don't. Don't. I can't help it. There must be something awful wrong with me. When I sing, women faint, and when they propose, they bust out crying. Look at me, Herbie. 
And don't ever forget what I say. That's the sweetest thing that ever happened to me, asking me to marry you. I just can't tell you how much it means because... because now I know what I want, too. The only trouble is I can't give you an answer now. There's, there's something I've got to do first. After I do it, I have a long story to tell. And then, if you'll ask me again... I will. In the meantime, just so we'll have something to remember, would you like to kiss me? Would I? Imagine a dope like me. I guess I was in love with him all the time and never knew him. It's happened before. Not to me. And to think I used to laugh at those Bobby South kids. Ah, it must be wonderful. I can see the wedding now. The groom wearing striped trousers and the bride wearing stripes too. I thought of that. But then the queerest thing happened. Thinking about Herbie instead of me for a change, I said to myself, what would Herbie do if he were in my place? Honest, Herbie? You tell the truth. Sure, that's the only thing I haven't tried. Maybe it'll work. Maybe. Beginner's luck, you know. I'm wearing all the stockholders to meet me in New York. Fine. And when the gruesome facts are made public, you know you're going to wind up without Herbie, don't you? Well, that's better than Herbie winding up behind the eight ball. You want some telegram blanks, miss? Thanks. I'll call for them. No, you'll wait right here for them while I'm still in this George Washington mood. Yes, sir. Shares and Herbie's earnings. Oh, hang on, folks. From here on in, it's going to be a rough ride. Did you ever add up all those shares I sold you? No, no. I'll save you the trouble. You each bought one quarter interest in him, and there are five of you. What does that add up to? 125%. 125%? Well, That's an elite. Well, we could put you in jail. All the time. I'll get there. a lawyer. I'll get a district maternity. Well, why don't somebody call the cops? Herbie. Hello, Herbie. So you did sell shares in my earnings? Yes. To all these people? Yes. So I haven't got a hundred thousand dollars. Well, you live. How much me? have I? I'm trying to tell you it all started, Dorothy. No, wait a minute. You were the one that sold him short. You must have been pretty certain he was going to flop. Thanks for having so much faith in me. Keep your shirt on, Herbie. What difference does it make now? What difference does it make? It makes all the difference in the world, that's all means you haven't been on the level with me for one single moment. Not one. It means I can't believe anything you ever said, or anything you ever told me about, about anything. It means you've just been making a sap out of me. Oh, don't stop crying. I'm afraid I couldn't believe that either. Take it easy, Herbie. A fine friend you are, all of you. Doesn't anything count in the world besides money? They taught us kids at the orphanage there were such things as friendship and loyalty and, and... and other things. I guess that sounds kind of corny. Maybe you'll understand me a little better if I start talking your language. And here it is. You've made your last dollar out of me. And that goes for the rest of you parasites. I'm through. I'll never sing another note as long as I live. I'm going back to Western Union. I'll make $10 a week more as a messenger boy and see if you can get 125% of that salary. Herbie! Herbie, wait! Well, that's the end of that, Kurt. It's no use, Dorothy. My mind's made up, so please leave me alone. Well, a girl has a right to protect her investment, hasn't she? And don't call me an investment. Listen, my little blue chips. Was it I who sold a piece of you to every Tom, Dick, and Harry? No, I had faith in you. I bet my hard-earned savings that you'd make good. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Well, think of it that way. You can think what you like about the others, but remember, I'm your friend. Oh, I know that. Oh, I'm just a little upset. I didn't mean you when I called all of them parasites. You're different, not like her. Well, she sold you like a block of common stock. My main concern is your career. I can't stand by and see you throw success overboard. Oh, Herbie, you just can't quit singing. Listen, Dorothy, let's get this straight. I think you're the only real friend I have in the whole world. And I'd sing love songs every day of my life for you. But not for the rest of those 
leeches. Wait a minute. Do you mean that you'd sing for me and not the others? Now we're getting somewhere. I'd rather be me with you than anybody else. Come in. Hiya, Betty. Hello, Mr. Crawford. Here's a list of request numbers for Herbie to sing tonight at the benefit. The wife made it up. This is the biggest night of my life. We've sold the whole main floor at $100 a seat. A quarter of a million bucks for charity. The governor's coming down from Albany. The president's promised to tune in. A 300 station hookup. Yes, sirree. Tonight, the name of J.J. Crawford will be on the lips of 50 million Americans. 50 million potential buyers of Crawford. Say, what is this, a wake? Which one is the body? Brace yourself, Mr. Crawford. This is going to hurt. Herbie won't sing tonight or any other night. Well, now I'll go back and... What did you say? Herbie isn't singing anymore. He's through. Definitely. Positively. And as of right now. Well, what was it? An auto accident? Is he hurt bad? Can't we patch him up? The show must go on. Once a trooper, always a trooper. It's a tradition. Tradition, smedition. Herbie took it on the lamb's too. Will somebody please tell me what's the matter with Herbie? Nothing except she cut him up into too many pieces. She sold 125% of him. To us. We're the stockholders. Yeah, and all we're holding now is the bag. Look, I don't care if she sold 5,000% of it. I've got an ironbound contract. Why, I built the whole show around him. If he don't sing at that benefit tonight, I'm going to sue every last one of you for every dollar you have or ever will have. Give me Plaza 51598. So you nitwits want to be theatrical managers. Ha! Ha! George, get this. I want you to find out where Betty Miller banked those checks we paid her. Slap an attachment on the dough immediately. Yes, the whole bank account. I'm bringing suit against her, Herbie Fenton, and a whole flock of partners. And have the whole legal department down in my office in 20 minutes. That's fine. That's not right, Mr. Corbett. Herbie worked hard for that money. Don't you talk to me about what's right. Unless that drooler crooner of yours sings tonight, you better all start packing for the poorhouse. Do you think he means it? If you don't think he means it, you don't know J.J. Crawford. If he says he'll sue, he'll sue. Well, we must do something. Oh, you mean yeah. we can use our lessons? And the new jukebox. And oh. he'd be even grabbing the money we've made up for oh. now. Quick, somebody, get a storm break. Oh, oh, Fanny, I'm so... I meet the strangest people in this corridor, and they're always you. Fanny, come with me. We haven't got a minute to lose. Go where? For what? Come on, it's one chance in a million. Give me your checkbook. Well, what do you want it for? Don't ask any questions. Okay, there. Don't think you can talk your way out of this. I haven't said a word. From now on, I act first and talk afterwards. What are you doing? I'm giving you the bank account. The whole works. But if you want to keep it, you've got to act fast. What is this? Still playing games with me? No, you big lunkhead. We're on your side, same as we've always been. Let me handle it. Here, I've shown my good faith. Now I want you to follow my instructions. And this is strictly business between manager and client. Catch? Yes, manager. Okay, here goes. First of all, you said you wouldn't sing as long as half of Brewsterville owned you. I want you to stick to that, will you? Oh, well, I, I just told Dorothy that maybe I'd sing for her. Well, we're not worried about Dorothy. Of course not. When she finds out Crawford suing the stockholders and attaching all our money. Attaching our money? Then what good is this check, manager? Look, you've been screaming to high heaven that I've swindled you out of your money. All right, now you can take your choice. You can go on being a temperamental prima donna and stay broke, or you can listen to me and Crawford can't touch a penny of it. Yes, manager, what do you want me to do? I know this will sound wild, but don't give me any argument. No, ma'am. I want you to catch the worst cold you've ever caught in your life. Catch a cold? That's what I thought I heard, too. Room service, please. It's our only solution. Crawford's attaching the money because you won't sing tonight. But if you catch a cold and lose your voice, he has no case. It's an act of God, like, like having a baby. Sure, and then the court will say it isn't your fault. Like having a baby? Room service? I want some ice. No, not for cocktails, to sit on. A large cake, please. I ought to know what I want. I said a large cake of ice to sit on. First, we've got to make you perspire. Come on, let's get hot, kid. Here, sit down and take your shoes off. My shoes. Better take your shirt off, too. I can 
the spy with my shirt on. Who's handling this thing? You've got to get your pores open. My pores are open. Well, they're not open wide enough. Here. Well, 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 the big board of directors meeting is still in session, I see. Well, right, 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 right. Let me tell her. Sit down, my dear. We've been mulling the whole thing over. After all, we don't want to make Herbie unhappy. So we figured that the simplest solution would be for one of us to buy out the others. Then, instead of having six managers, it would be so much easier for Herbie to come to a deal with one. Are you trying to buy my share, or do you want me to buy all of yours? Personally, we'd be willing to listen to any offer within reason. And if I stay away from my restaurant, my customers will get sore at me, and I'll wind up behind the meatball. See, as we see it, you're the logical one. Your employer is very wealthy, and if you told him we'd consider 5,000 apiece... Uh, this would be my own private little venture. So shall we compromise, say, at uh, $50 apiece? You come up a little, and we'll come down a little. $50. $50? You think we're just a bunch of idiots? You think we're nothing but a lot of maroons? That we don't know nothing, $50? I'll take it. You think the crack will do it, Fanny? If you want to give him pneumonia, double pneumonia. Uh, there we are. Think he's done? Well, if I could stick a fork in him, that's the way my mother could always tell. Come on, hot stuff, get ready for the chill of a lifetime. Did he turn into an icicle yet? Give him another ten minutes or so. I don't believe in halfway measures. American Cold Storage Company. The desk clerk. Miss Dodge and who else? Two policemen. Well, we'll tell them Mr. Fenton ain't in. He went that way. He's got to get him out of that shower. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hey. We'll try it again now. June comes around every year. June comes around every spring time. Herbie, have you all gone crazy? I was just resting. What are you trying to do, catch pneumonia? Well, that's the general idea. Can you suggest a good recipe? Get your clothes on. The mayor sent a police escort to take you to the benefit, and they're downstairs now. You seem to have forgotten that I am Mr. Fenton's manager. Since I am now sole owner of all the shares, I accept your resignation. You mean you bought out the others? Yes. You belong to me now, Herbie, dear. You couldn't arrange to cover up both sides of your face, could you? You <laughs> made a bad investment. I'm through, you understand? I'll never sing another note, and in fact, I won't be able to. Keep cool, Herbie. I am cool. You know what'll happen to you if he doesn't sing. That's my headache. What'll happen to her? Never mind, Herbie. I can take care of myself. What are you holding out on me? Oh, you silly so-and-so. Has it sunk through your sick skull what Betty's doing? Fanny. Betty, nothing. She's doing this so corporate can't grab your money. You'll be independent for life, but she's putting herself behind bars. What? Don't pay any attention to her. What if I do go to jail? All I'll get is five years at the most. I'm 19 now. I'll only be 24 when I get out. I don't want the money that badly. Get me off here. I'll sing. I've got to sing. Why, before I see Betty go to... Jail, I, I, ah, the sun height. Thanks. What kind of a guy do you think I, I, ah, the sun height. You take it this time. Ah, the sun height. Now look what you, my voice. I can't talk. That show starts in 40 minutes. You'd better get him down there, voice or no voice. 
Get a throat specialist. Make him gargle. Try anything. But get him down there. You're cooked. Annie, what do we do? Let us spray, sister. Spray. Get your smelling salts, ladies, before Herbie says and sings. Get your smelling salts, ladies. Show starts in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We bid you a most cordial welcome to the Starlight Room. We have a great show for you tonight, headed by that sensational personality, Herbie Fenton. We begin our entertainment with an unusually talented group of young ladies needing no introduction. Miss Betty Miller and her glamorous.
Crawford. These shares are no good to anyone but you. How do you figure that out? Well, you're the only one that can force Herbie to sing, so you might as well be sole stockholder. And what's more, he'll do as I say. That's right. You'll be in the driver's seat. If you win, you win, and if you lose, you win. In the driver's seat, eh? That's right. All right. I'll give you, shall we say, $500. Shall we say $5,000? Or shall we say goodbye? I'll write you a check. Fine, if you'll cash it. My check is perfectly good. <laughs> yes, but your cash is much better. Wait right here. If I didn't practice, mother said you got it. And she made me do as I was told. So I practiced my glissandos, I polished my forsandos, I worked on pizzicatos and fancy obligados. I played the classics morning, noon, and night. And someday in my memoir, I'll write. I might have been a famous violinist, as fine a concert artist as they come. I started from the ground up, but look at how I wound up. Now all I do is beat the ground up drum. I might have played the harp on concert stages. What beautiful cadenzas I could strum. A noted virtue also. I could have been, I know so. Now all I do is beat the ground up Long arpeggios to make my fingers nimble. I mastered all those long arpeggios, so I wind up hitting a cymbal. Get up! My zither might have put them in a dither, and top gun any mind. A happy icky till fate with me. Oh, Mickey! Now all I do is beat this goddamn drum. Beat it up, dig it in. Beat it up, dig it in, beat it up, dig it in, beat it up. Chop it up, get it down. Chop it up, get it down, beat it up, dig it in, beat it up. On me. But honestly, it's, it's... It's an act of God, Mr. Crawford. You can't make him stick to his contract. 
Yeah. Did you ever have a baby, Mr. Crawford? And did you ever see these before? They add up to 125%. And if that little boyfriend of yours doesn't get out there and sing, I'm handing these over to the district attorney in the morning. But I tell you, I can't. Look, honest, I'm not trying to put this on. You heard me. Boy, now we are in a mess. If you don't sing, Betty goes to jail. But I've got to. And if you do sing, he'll hold you to that $50 a week. Hey, Betty, we're on again. Don't worry about me, Herbie. Go home and take care of that cold. Why well, can let you go to jail? I'm staying right here. There isn't just one, but five reasons why we're so proud to present our next attraction. There are five eminent conductor pianists who have combined their talents to pay tribute to the newest member of their ranks, Betty Miller. As a certain comedian might say, uh, gosh, how could we afford him? Play, boys. <laughs>
the verdict, Doctor? It's difficult to tell. His vocal organs seem all right. Looks like one of those conditions brought on by a shock of some sort. How long do these things usually last? Anywhere from 10 minutes to 10 years. Just keep him in a good frame of mind. It'll help as much as anything. Good night. Good night. Yes? Uh, pardon me, Miss Miller. I'm in uh, charge of the electrical effects on the stage here. Yes. These are my two daughters, Genevieve and Cynthia. Well, you know how it is. Autographs? Would her be autographed this copy of Aldous World with his picture on it? She takes piano lessons. And this record? It's Herbie's latest. She plays the Victrola. <laughs> well, Mr. Fenton has a very bad cold. Wait I... a minute. Let me see that record. It, it's him. I'd rather be me. Have you got a phonograph backstage? Sure, I run it myself. Betty, we're not like Jack. What do you mean? We're going to play the record over the loudspeaker. Herbie will pretend to sing. Do you understand? And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for. So without further ado, I give you our guest of honor, Herbie Fenton. If you don't give Herbie a new deal. Just a minute, Betty. Herbie can make any deal he wants to, and there's absolutely nothing Mr. Crawford can do about it. Oh, I can't. Well, why not? She's a minor. She's only 19. And in the state of Pennsylvania, a person has to be 21 before they can sign a legal contract. Well, that's wonderful. Does that mean you don't have to go to jail? That's right. You better go out and take another bow, kids. They're tearing the house down. anyone else. Thanks, Bing. Somehow I find it more fun just being the one 